Hi, I'm Jill and I am the creator of the Complete Garden Planner. The beauty of this planner is that it's customizable and you can make it into anything you want it to be. Here are my best tips to using your Complete Garden Planner, printing out all the pages that you need and none of the ones you don't, and creating a customized garden planner and journal that will serve you all season long. Before I show you how I print the specific pages that I want to print from the Complete Garden Planner, I just wanted to show you the final copy of what I have and how I have put it together. You totally can do this whatever way you want to do it, but maybe some of my tips will give you some inspiration to be able to customize it for yourself. The first thing that I did is I bought a three ring binder and I chose one with the little slit sleeve right here. I printed my cover page in cardstock just because I wanted it to be a little bit heavier duty. You don't have to do that. And then I slipped it in the front. And then when I open up here, you'll see that I have created different tabs. And this corresponds to these five specific sections of the planner. Plan, the calendar, grow, observe, and harvest. That's just how I chose to label those. And they also correspond to each of these main sections. The garden planning journal will be the plan, the monthly garden planner will be the calendar, the garden growing journal will be grow, the garden observations journal will be observe, and then harvest and preserving log will go to harvest. These particular little tabs I got at Staples and I liked them because all I had to do is just stick them on here. And what I did is I chose for each of the the sections cover pages I printed these cover pages on cardstock so they would be a little bit more heavy duty and you can see that I just affixed each of these to the cardstock and so it will be easy to flip between sections in the journal here labeled like that so I chose to do those in cardstock but the rest of the planner I chose just to do with regular paper and you can see here with the index page, I have that front and center. And then anytime I want to go anywhere in the planner, it's just so much easier to be able to find what I need. And so you can just kind of see how I've chosen to organize it all in my planner. One other thing that I've done in the past that you might want to do is once you get your garden layout done is, let me find it here whatever garden layout you have, let's say this ends up being my final layout, a lot of times I will just take this out of the planner. Now this is like I said, once I've already finalized it, I'll take it out of the planner, I will go to the back page, and then I will put it in the back sleeve, like this. And then I will actually use this journal and I will take it out to the garden with me. And then this is an easy way for me to reference where I have decided to plant everything. So that's just a tip that I use. You certainly don't have to, especially if you have lots of different layout plans, but that's something that I use just to make it easier to get to the page that I use the most. Next, I'm going to show you how I choose which pages I'm going to print, how I print multiple pages, how I skip certain pages if I don't need them. That way I can make this customizable for me in my garden planning journey for the year. Hey there, I'm getting ready to print out my complete garden planner for my own use. And I'm just gonna show you how I customize it for my garden so that you can do the same thing for your garden. I have it pulled up here, but you may have yours in a planner version. If I can find it down here, there you go. You may have it here in a PDF, so you'd be able to use and scroll this way, but I'm gonna show you mine here. The first thing you're gonna see is the title page. So the second page is what you're really gonna focus on, and this is what makes this planner customizable to however you want to use your planner. This is the index page. Within the Complete Garden Planner, you have five different sections. The first is the garden planning journal. The second is the monthly garden planner. The third is the garden growing journal. 
The fourth is the Garden Observations Journal. And the fifth is the Harvest and Preserving Log. And what I like to do with each of these sections is I like to put them into different tabs in my three ring binder. And you'll see that each section has a cover page like this. So I'll definitely print those out to be able to delineate between the different sections. The second thing that you'll notice in this index is the circles here. And what you will do in those circles is that you will actually enumerate the pages of your planner because you may print out everything or you may not print out everything or you may print out multiple copies of some pages depending on how large your garden is. So you this would not really serve you if I had a an actual index page that had hard and fast numbers. So this way you can actually make this customizable to you. So after this, we're going to be scrolling down to the title page of the first section. And then we have our first page of the planner. And this is what I do. I will scroll down and I will decide which of these pages that I'm going to print. Now, normally I will write down these pages on a sheet of paper, but just so it's easier for you to see, I've pulled up a sticky note here on my screen. And so this is what I'm going to go through before I print my planner. I'm going to write down which pages of my planner that I'm going to print. So if you see here, I've got a page four, so I know which page I'm on. If you are looking at your PDF copy, this you may see your pages here and you're scrolling here, you see what page you're on right up here. So you'll be able to see whatever program you're, you're pulling up your PDF on, what page you're looking at. So I know for sure I wanna print page one, through and I'm just going to go through here. I definitely want to go through my garden goals. Now this page I don't necessarily need personally. Planning time for a garden. If you're a brand new gardener or you're trying to get better at honing in when you're going to be doing your garden, uh, actually tending to your garden, or if you don't know how big your garden is going to be, this is important. But for me, I've already got that and I'm not needing it. So page six, I don't need. So I'm going to go here and do pages one through five, and then I'll put a comma there. I'm going to skip page six. I'm going to skip page seven because I already know my garden space and size. I don't need to work all that out. But if you're new and you don't know where you're going to be growing different things, then you will definitely want to print this out. So I'm going to skip that. And then here we come to page eight. And I definitely am going to print this out because it's where I am focusing on which crops I'm going to be growing in my garden. The top priorities for my garden, secondary, new crops. I definitely want that for vegetables and for herbs and flowers. If you're not growing herbs and flowers, you can skip that. I'm also looking to see if there is any page that I might want to print more of. And I'm coming to this one right here, which is the seed and plant research. And I know based on last year that I needed way more pages than just this one, just because I like to use this page as I'm looking through seed catalogs and being able to take notes on different potential varieties. And also I like to compare prices and that kind of thing. So that's a page that I will use more than one. So let's go back to here, the complete garden planner. It looks like I wanted to do eight through, let's see, the last one of the seed inventory was page 16. I'll write 16 there. And then it looks like page 17, the seed plant research. I'm going to want probably four of those. So I'm just going to make a note times four. All right. So I went through the first section in the complete garden planner, and you can see that I have listed which pages that I personally want to print out. Again, I can always come back if I run out of pages or I need more of these note pages, I can come back and print those out as well. But this is what I think that I need to start out with. The second section is the monthly garden planner. I definitely want to print out the front of that one, which is page 36. And I want to print out all of these, of course. And this monthly garden planner, this is what I'll be using to plan my whole garden year on what I'm going to do on a week by week basis. So there's tips here on what type of um, garden tasks that you might wanna do per month and you can see those on each month. So I'm gonna, just gonna scroll through here. Now, if you are getting this planner in March, for example, you might just completely skip 
January and February. There's no reason to print those out if you are getting this later in the year. Just print out the ones you need. As for me, um, I'm doing this in December, and so I'm printing all of these out. The next thing I have is the Garden Growing Journal, and this is going to be the same as the Garden Planning Journal. I'm gonna go through each of these pages and decide which ones I want to print and how many. And this is another one of those things where I've got an indoor seed starting log, cool season crops, that should be plenty of space, but for the warm season crops, I may need more, so I may need to print multiple pages. So I'm gonna go through this for the entire, um, the entire Garden Growing Journal. Included here, I want to make sure and bring this up. We have a plant log, and these are separated into cool weather crops. And coming with the journal, we already have several pages here, and each of these has two places for two crops. So we have a plant section here, we have a plant section here. So this may be something that you'll want to make sure that is kind of flexible for you, depending on how many that you that you grow. But I've got several already planned in here. And then you can see here that we switched to warm weather crops. Use this however you want to use it. And then I also have a plant log for, I think fall crops is next. No, we got herbs and flowers. So if you want to separate your herbs and flowers, you can separate those. And then we have the garden observations journal. This is a journal area where you can print out and you can write down what you're seeing in your garden. Some people use this religiously. Some people don't use it at all. This completely depends on you. And again, if you're starting this later in the year, just print out whichever week you're starting with. Just write down which page you want to start with so that you know which to print out. If you want to save ink on the front end, you might print three months in advance, print them out, and then print out the rest later. You can come back to this, whatever you want to do. But that's the Garden Observations Journal. And then finally, we have the harvest and preserving log. And then this again is something that you can use based on what you think that you're going to use with your harvest log, or you can just wait and print it out in a couple of months when you start harvesting. But again, you can do the same thing and you can print out what you think you might need. Freezer log, canning log, dehydration log, herbs and spice, you have all that you need. And then you've got lots of pages at the end for your notes if you wanna use those. So I'm going to finish up all of the pages that I want to print and then I will be back here and show you how I print and how I put together my complete garden planner. Now that I know which pages in my complete garden planner that I want to print, but what you'll do here is you've got your complete garden planner. You'll go to file and you'll go to print. And then <clears throat> what you will do here is when it goes to pages here, unless you want to print the whole thing out, what I do is go from, and you'll see it has page one to whatever, page five. And then you can print it out in batches like this. So if I wanted to do that, I would print out from one to five, and then I would hit print. And then after that is finished, then I would could go over here to, looks like after I do one to five, then eight to 16, the 17 is the first one I want four pages. So I would go over here to, page 17. That wasn't the right one. <laughs> I got that wrong already. Okay. It was this one, 16. Okay. So I'll go to print that's selected and then which pages selected from the sidebar. And then I would change the copies right here to four. And then I would print there. Now you can have the option of doing one sided or two sided. But then you would just do this for each section of what you write down of what you want to print, whether it's a range or whether it's a number of copies. So hopefully by showing you how I have created my complete garden planner in a way that's most usable for me, then you'll be able to customize it to the way that you want it to work for you. As you can see, you can make the complete garden planner your very own. Enjoy using it from the planning stage to your harvest and preserving stage and all points in between. I hope you enjoy using your planner and have the best garden season ever.